First of all, welcome to my class and uh, thank you for coming. What are you, what are you doing? Don't touch that. My name is Esther Bonnie Parker. I am a prop designer. And in this studio, I craft hundreds of props per year for major motion pictures. In this class, I'm gonna show you my process and show you how you can achieve my level of success. N not my level, of, not my level of success. You're never, it's really, really hard. You can't, you can't, you can't get to my level. You can try, but you're weak, ultimately. You know, I hear, I hear a lot of people in the industry, they talk about 3D printers, assembly lines, working with others, and yeah, sure, those are valid approaches, you know, if you're a coward and a fraud. The only true approach to prop making is to craft everything by hand, by yourself. Yes, it takes a while, but I believe that the time spent is worth it. Captain America's shield took me months, but it paid off, okay? The year it took for Detective Pikachu's magnifying glass? Okay, well that one's debatable. The five years it took to craft the titular kissing booth from the movie Kissing Booth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that took a lot out of me. That wasn't, that wasn't worth it in the end, no. Have you seen the movie? When I worked on the Lord of the Rings films, I lovingly crafted every single orc axe and hobbit sword, and I was proud of my, my beautiful work. By the end of that, I was in a sort of, sort of feral state. It's like I had become the Hobbit. The footage of me was actually so disturbing that they, they couldn't include me in the uh, DVD extras. They hired a, a nice group of uh, New Zealand men with beards to pretend to be the prop designer. Um, on the plus side, the footage of me in that feral state was actually used as a character reference for Gollum. Prop designing is a beautiful thing, but as I hope you now understand, it is also a lot of work, okay? So sometimes I take shortcuts like reusing the same prop for every movie. For example, one thing that directors come to me for is a MacGuffin, okay? And if you don't know that term, that's okay. You're here to learn. A MacGuffin is an important thing in a movie's plot that one character is trying to find or take from another. Like the Ark of the Covenant, the One Ring, or the, the baby in Baby Driver. I assume I've actually never seen it. Anyway, so when a director comes to me uh, looking for an object like this, I might say, have you considered a glowing rock? Let me tell you, directors love this, okay? That single question changed the course of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. And ever since that day, they've just been trying to recapture the magic. Wonder Woman 84, glowing rock. Avatar, rocks that don't glow. Deadpool 2, a watch that glows, but it's not a rock. <laughs> you do the math. So they call me up to do some work on Jungle Cruise, but get this, they say, no glowing rocks. <laughs> so I tell them, how about a glowing flower instead? They said, Esther, you got a deal. So I retool some of my old rock designs, and that's how you make lemons out of lemonade. The French have a term, it's called mise en scène. So that basically just means that the scène belongs to mise, okay? <laughs> Everything that you see in the background of an image, yeah, that's up to me. Except when they want to throw in one of these Easter eggs. It's like I spend months working on these props to make them perfect, to make them perfectly fit into the world of the film, and then some 
not nice person comes along and tells me I gotta put something in the background like Yoda's Walkman or sneak in minion divorce papers or something. It's just bungs up the process. Remember, you make the props. You are not their prop. So like a lot of craftspeople in the movie industry, I don't need my work to be noticed. You know, I, I get the reward of just seeing my hard work pay off on screen. But uh, sometimes my work gets noticed in all the wrong ways. You know, everybody had an opinion about the coffee cup in Game of Thrones. Listen, I was just doing exactly what I was asked to do. So I was told, spoiler alert, that Daenerys would snap and start an evil empire. And I thought, what better way to foreshadow an evil empire than Starbucks? If you don't like my art, then that's on you. If you're not ready to get political, that's on you. Did I get the idea after working on the kissing booth for months in a room with little ventilation? Yes. Did I inhale some paint fumes? Not on purpose. Did I like it? I found that I did. But life is full of happy accidents. Don't touch that! Who's touching? Take notes. Are you taking notes? I hate Easter eggs! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like getting like heartburn from doing that. <laughs> Can you hear that? I don't know. I've never seen the movie. I don't know if that makes any sense.